What is the best method of concealed carry? Is there actually a best method? A lot of people will tell you it comes down to personal preference. It doesn't. Your personal preference has almost nothing to do with it. I promise I will explain that, and if you find yourself wanting to argue with it, you probably actually agree with me. Appendix carry is, hands down, the best form of carry for concealed carrying any weapon, really, not just a pistol. Objectively speaking, in almost every way, with very few exceptions. I'm gonna explain the ways that appendix carry is superior to carry, let's say, around your hip somewhere. In fact, the reason that most people will say they prefer to carry around their hip it's the reason that humans do lots of stupid things. It's because they're scared and lazy. I know, I know. Now, don't get me wrong. I carried at four o'clock for 15 years. I understand that this, you might think, is not for everybody, and maybe it's not, but it's for almost everybody. I'm carrying in an LAS concealment Ronin. It's that guy right there. You have the holster, obviously, and then this little sidecar jammy here. This video is sponsored by LAS Concealment. They made these holsters and sent them to me. Actually, this one I'm wearing is a little bit cooler. I'll show you that in a second. A lot of companies have sent me holsters and a lot of companies have wanted to sponsor me to plug their holsters. And this is what I've settled on. Also, I've met the owner and he is a cool dude and that's important. And they also have in waistband and other types of holsters, not just appendix carry. Uh, you can get those, I guess, if you want. I will put a link down in the description below. They actually have a sale going on right now, 30% off all their quick ship and blowout items. So make sure you go click that link down below if you're looking for a new holster. But let's get to the straight main point why I'm saying that appendix carry is better then we'll say four o'clock. Right off the bat, we have to draw, we have to get to it. If it's in the appendix carry, I can use my other hand to clear my cover garment. If I'm carrying anywhere around the hip, four o'clock or whatever, I could use this, but I'm having to reach across my body. What most people do is they'll use this and reach, or if they're dressed some way like this, like either a jacket or a sweatshirt or an unbuttoned button up, they have to do this and then reach it. It's a little more difficult like this. So right off the bat, it's easier to clear a cover garment with appendix carry. That's a fact. I don't know that anyone could dispute that. It's just, this is better and higher percentage than any version of that. There's also just the fact that it's easier to access while sitting down. If you're in a car or something like that, this is easier to get to than this. If you've ever, even, even not in the waistband, even not concealed carry, a hip holster over here, it's, it's harder to do that while you're seated in a chair with arms or in a car. But doing this creates a lot of problems. A lot, more than you think, and that's gonna be the main reason. Reaching back here is a mechanically weaker movement than reaching right here. And if you're not sure about that, I can prove it to you. If you are, uh, if you've ever wrestled or you've even done gymnastics or you're any type of athlete, you'll probably get this pretty quickly and you already get it. But just in case you're unsure about this, I want you to take your hands and put them right here. Even if you're sitting, put them right here. Now, when I say flex everything in your body, flex everything in your body. Flex, all right, just flex. Feel how strong and tense you can get with your hands right here. Now, take one hand, put it right here, and then flex everything in your body. And you should have had a little hiccup where your brain tried to think, well, how will I do that? And then when you did figure out how to flex, you should feel this disconnect. Even if you get very disciplined in your movement, you should feel that as stuff moves away from your center, moves away from your core, you are physically weaker. But why is that important? Why do we need to be stronger? Well, that's how I found out that this was better. I had to reach out to LAS Concealment to get me one of these, which that's the first one they sent me. That's a little large one. This one's cooler. You know why this one's cooler? Because it's orange and it's a really sweet like multi-cam black. Uh, speaking of customization, you can also like lengthen that or change this up or change the the cant of it. And then once you get it, I have not put Loctite on these to lock them down, but that's what you should do once you get that exactly where you want it. I'm not 100% sure where I want this thing yet because I'm still experimenting, which that's how I, I figured out that I needed this was because I was getting my ass kicked in force on force once contact was made. And I don't mean contact, bang, bang, bang. I mean contact like bang, bang, bang. 
I found out that appendix carry was better for sure, objectively speaking, for real fighting with weapons. It wasn't a gun course, it was in a knife course. I went to Craig Douglas's edged weapons overview and I was able to more successfully draw a knife from here concealed while Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and wrestling experts were grabbing me than I ever was able to get to a gun in an out of the waistband, not concealed, like a duty style holster. Like that should be like the easiest thing to get to. When you were in a real fight with a person, getting to here proved almost impossible without some hiccups. The biggest problem comes from that when you reach for a weapon, and this goes for either place, when you reach for a weapon while you're already fighting with a person, they always know. They sense it, they feel it. Firsthand, I have had on duty as a police officer, people attempt to draw and use weapons against me while I was in contact with them exactly four and a half times. Uh, maybe that's for another video. But all four times while I was fighting with them and they went for the weapon, I knew right away and that was before any specialized training. So even though it might seem like, well, you guys are all trained, you guys all are, are knowing what to expect, I'm telling you, every time someone's gone for a weapon with me, I knew that that's what was happening. So what does that mean? Why, if, if it's the true for either place, why is that better here? Because when I reach for here, I am stronger. So when they go to stop me from reaching from here, or if they feel my weapon and go for it first from here, my hand's going to here, I am stronger. I can fight them with two hands. I'm, I can flex everything. I can kick at them. Let, I'll explain. That actually is a great segue. This is very often how fights look. If I'm trying to draw from here or stop a guy from taking this from me, if he's already kind of getting the better of me, and I'm kicking, I can kick, I can fight, I can hold with one hand, fight with the other, hold with this hand, fight with the other. As I go to draw, I could theoretically uh, clear my cover garment with either hand, though I'm not advocating that you learn to draw and shoot like this, though that's, that's badass. Can't say I haven't tried it. But drawing from here is a lot easier than drawing from here. And if I'm on this hip, I can still draw from here. It's still a struggle. I have to do some shenanigans, but I would never get to this hip if I'm on it, which can be a positive. You can use that to help you retain. And if I'm here, I've like offered this on a silver platter from the front or from the back. As he circles around, he could take that. Whereas I could draw from here, but you know where you very often end up? Very often we end up some form of like this. Now, if I'm like this and I reach back here, this arm, the space I've created, and this goes for any position, is, is a, a hole that they can fill with something to help control me, to elevate this arm, to pin it to me, whatever. Especially if you've ever been a cop. If you're a police officer and you don't understand why this is stronger yet, you're stupid. Because how hard is it to get someone's hands out from under them when they're like this, or worse, when they're belly down and flattened out? How hard is it to get their hands out from here? And you might be thinking, but Mike, you definitely can't draw if you're flattened out with your gun underneath you. Uh, let me tell you something. If you're flattened out and on your belly, you're probably going to lose from any position because you shouldn't be trying to draw right then. You should be trying to improve your position. You start building a base and then you can draw more easily while you can still defend the weapon relatively better than if it was out here for everyone to see and grab at. Why would I ever get into a grappling match if there's a gun involved, right? You shouldn't be grappling if you have a gun. You don't always get to decide, bro. Which brings me to the reason that you probably still wanna carry at four o'clock. The reason you still wanna carry at four o'clock is because you're scared and you're lazy. Maybe, there's other reasons, I'll get to them. But a lot of you is because you're scared and lazy. How do I know this? Because I wanted to carry at four o'clock because I was scared and lazy. I carried at four o'clock for 15 years. This is where I kept my gun. Why did I keep my gun there though? If, if appendix is so much better, why did I keep my gun there? One, I was scared. I was like, I don't wanna blow my ding-a-ling off. Now, I get that. I mean, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty good argument, but I realized that if I managed to carry back here for 15 years, sometimes not in a holster, don't tell mom, uh, and I didn't blow my ass cheek off or dig a trench down my hamstring, 
that those same skills and, and procedures would allow me to not blow my ding -a off. But even after I figured out that it was safe and it was better, even after I knew that, I still didn't make the switch because I was lazy. I didn't want to practice something new and I know enough, even though I'm a lazy coward sometimes, I do know enough that if you're going to do something new, you have to practice with it. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to practice because practicing something new is not ego affirming. I was slower at it. I had to slow back down. I had to basically start from scratch. And I had gotten real used to clearing my cover garment this way, or for some of you clearing your gar cover garment this way, like you've practiced that a lot. You put a lot of time into that, hopefully. And switching is, you know, it's scary. But I saw this and thought, that thing is cool. That's, it's better. I know that it's safe. I know that it's better. I just need to stop being such a lazy ass and I just need to go to classes and go to the range and practice that. So that's what I did. And I had a immeasurably greater success rate of retaining my weapon and drawing my weapon in force on force than I ever did here once actual real physical contact was made. On a flat range, maybe it's, it's really close. And maybe that's enough for you. Maybe that's all you care about is how good you are on a flat range. Let me cover the personal preference thing real quick because that's gonna be a difficult hump for some people to get over because they're gonna say things like, I'm more comfortable with it at four o'clock. Yeah, so was I. Whether you're physically more comfortable or emotionally more comfortable, it doesn't matter. That doesn't make it better. It's objectively better in the place that you can get to it the quickest and defend it the most effectively from. And if you think that there's things like, well, you know, my job requires me to wear a suit with a jacket and a tuckable holster is too slow, that's not your personal preferences. Those are your circumstances. If your chest is like too little and your gut sticks out too big, that's not your preference. You definitely don't prefer that. That's your circumstances. The only caveat here, I guess I would say, is maybe if you are a police officer, military, security, someone who carries a sidearm on duty on your hip, you... Mike could argue, and I'm not entirely sure, you might could argue that you should carry your concealed weapon in a similar place. At the very least, it'd be time taken away from your main, most important skill set. Because it's it'd be far more important for you to spend your training time accessing a duty weapon than spend valuable training time working on a different concealed carry setup. So, but for me, I recognize the superiority of this for almost all the applications and definitely for all the ones that mattered to me. This is better. Uh, and not only is appendix carry better, I think LAS consumer is probably the best way to do it right now. It's it's set up for that. Uh, obviously, like I said, they have other stuff that's not appendix carry down there. But this little claw helps press it against your body. They just thought about a lot of features, but you can also remove it on the bigger one uh, that I have. I removed that claw. <clears throat> So it's customizable. I'll put a link down in the description below. Reminder, they've also got that sale right now. 30% off all the quick ship and blowout items. And if you want more fitness tips, self-defense techniques, gear reviews, as well as concepts and principles that make you hard to hurt, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. <laughs>